Now, one thing which might come to your mind and that brings us to our point number five, what if we take subsidy now in our name and then after some time, let's do a project in our family member name and take subsidy again. Is that allowed? Today, we are going to talk about subsidy. If you are already involved in agriculture or say you want to get into agriculture, uh, then initial capital investment can be very high. Government understands that. So that's where government supports people who are entering into agriculture by providing them with some subsidy. The scheme I'm going to talk to you about is the national level scheme. It's from the central government. So irrespective of which state or which part of India you live in, this scheme will apply to you. Now, what we will do is we will look at 10 points related to subsidy. Point number one. If you want to apply for subsidy under this scheme, then the project size should be at least 2,600 square meter. That's close to three fourths of an acre. And if the size is less than this, then you cannot apply for subsidy under this scheme. The reason for this size requirement may be because the larger the size of the project, the better is the financial sustainability of a project. And when government is putting their money with you, they would not want you to fail. So that's where there's a limit saying, if you want subsidy, you should at least have this much size of project. So that's point number one. Now coming to point number two, you cannot grow anything if you and everything if you want to get this subsidy. Government has also listed down which are the crops on which you can get subsidy. So the first one is flowers. You can grow flowers and you can get subsidy on them. The second one is peppers, colored capsicum, green capsicum, uh, different kind of chilies. You can get subsidy on them. The third one is cucumber family, your uh, zucchini is English cucumber, you can get subsidy on them. Fourth one is tomato family, cherry tomatoes, San Marino, normal tomatoes, you can get subsidy on them. So if your crops are falling within these categories, then your project can get subsidy. Number three, how much subsidy can you get? So you can get a subsidy of around 56 lakh maximum in your lifetime. Irrespective of what's your project size, so let's say you are doing a very, very large project, still the maximum amount you can get is 56 lakhs. On the other hand, if you are doing a smaller project, then you might get less amount because the amount which is given by government is a proportion of what you are spending. So let's say you are doing only one acre of project. You might not end up getting 56 lakhs. What you might end up getting is between 25 to 30 lakhs, depending upon what kind of project you are setting it up. Okay. So that is point number three. Now point number four is Let's say you are setting up a small project now and you are getting 30 lakhs as subsidy. 26 lakhs is still left with the government. Can you set up a project again or can you extend the project and then apply for subsidy again? The answer to that is no, that's not possible. When government is giving you subsidy, it's basically giving you a one-time support to help you stand on your feet and start running. And when you have already stood on your feet, now you want to expand, you should not expect the support again from government. So you will get subsidy only once in your lifetime, whether you do a large project and get entire 56 lakhs or you do a small project and get a portion of that is something that you have to decide. Now, one thing which might come to your mind and that brings us to our point number five, what if we take subsidy now in our name and then after some time, let's do a project in our family member name and take subsidy again. Is that allowed? The answer is no, it's not allowed. So this subsidy is for entire family. You cannot put different projects in different family member names and take subsidy every time. That uh, was point number five. Now, there are some preconditions that are required if you want this subsidy. The first precondition is, which is point number six, that if you are going to take subsidy, you have to take a bank loan. A bank has to appraise the project. They have to see whether the project makes sense or not. They have to understand the risk and they have to issue a loan. And only if you are getting this loan from the bank, after that government will approve the subsidy application, otherwise they will not approve it. Seven point to understand is this loan is a secured loan. It's not an unsecured loan. The interest rate will be low, definitely, but you have to put a asset or a mortgage to get this loan. Point number eight. When you are doing this project, the land on which the project you are on which you are doing this project should be in your possession. And this possession can be in two ways. It can either be by direct ownership or it can be by lease. If you have leased the land, then the lease agreement duration should be at least for 10 years. 
and the project report that you're submitting to the bank should be for a 10-year project report based on which they will issue the loan to you. Now that brings us to ninth point, which is the time this entire process takes. This entire process may take between two to three months. So when you are starting out your project plan, when you are starting about your financial plan, cash flow plan, do understand that if you are applying for subsidy, it will take two to three months to complete the process, budget for that, and then move forward. So these were nine very important points to give you information about subsidy. Ten point is something which is not about this information, but about a much more relevant information, and which is basically to save you uh, from getting into wrong hands. You might find many people who will tell you that to get subsidy, you'll have to give some 5% or 10% or 15% commission to the government agencies, and then only subsidy can be approved. This is not right. The entire process of subsidy is an online process. So even if someone wants to get money out of you, the max someone can do is raise queries and delay the project. So what will happen in two to three months may take four to five months to happen. But if you stand your ground firm, if you are working with the right guys, if your paperwork is right, then no one can stop you from getting subsidy because the process is online and on every step, everything is documented. So if people are telling you, you need to give a cut to get subsidy, try to stay away from those people. It's your and my duty. It's our duty to make sure that we don't encourage corruption. If it means that we have to wait for one or two months more, let's do that. But let's make sure that we do the things right way. And when you are building the foundation of your business, do it on trust, integrity, and right things, and not on giving bribe to people. I hope this video was useful for you. If you need any help, any assistance, please do reach out to us. And from my side, from our team, all the best to you. Thank you.